This is a time of rapid change and transformation. Uh, technology has changed the way we create stories, edit them, and format them for distribution on platforms of all kinds. But Vice has kind of been platform agnostic. We started as a magazine and we transformed into a video company. And the core of our storytelling has always been focused on culture. I want to take this moment to actually reflect on some of the cultural changes over the last decade. You can see it as the march of two opposing narratives or forces. I'm calling one narrative the crisis of information and the other opposing narrative the liberation of information. Three big events define the crisis of information. One, the war on terror. Two, climate change. And three, economic collapse. The war on terror was, and still is, a case of little or no, or worse, of false information. Pre-9-11 intelligence was either non-existent or scant, and the few important bits of information that did exist were just not contextualized within a pattern. Remember, the agencies couldn't connect the dots. The second big event of the decade was climate change. Not the phenomenon itself, but the moment in the middle of the decade where climate change emerged into the national consciousness. You have to point to Al Gore's feature film, An Inconvenient Truth. In this case, the information on climate change was always there, but it was highly specialized and concentrated in the hands of the scientific community. The science pre-Gore was simply not popular. An Inconvenient Truth changed all of that. The final big event of the decade was the economic collapse of 2008. In this case, it wasn't so much a lack of information as it was a lack of information analysis. There were many data points, or at least enough, but there were simply no attempt to connect these dots. Only a handful of economists warned of the coming disaster. The problem was a lack of transparency. The big casualty of that decade was trust. Trust in politicians, in military leaders, in scientists and experts of all kinds, also in the media, but above all, it was trust in systems. All of the big systems that govern life on our planet, well, they failed spectacularly in the 2000s. And as a result, we're all to various degrees wary of putting our faith into them. Let's move on to the other big narrative of the last decade, the story of the liberation of information. The 2000s was the last chapter of the information age, the late information age, I'll call it. And it's characterized primarily by three features. One, computing hardware, the perfection and proliferation of smart machines. Two, connectivity, the wiring and unwiring of the planet from telephony to fiber to wireless. And three, the rise of the internet from the first versions of Netscape to the rise of Google and social media behemoths like Facebook and Twitter. All of these advances have been about liberating information for mass public consumption. It's a revolution of popular empowerment. The moment in history when machines of information, storage and manipulation, the connection of those machines, and the universal language of their communication finally became the domain of all, or at least a great many. So how are these two big narratives related and are they in fact opposed to each other? I actually think that they're merging. The liberation of information is total or it's going to be total and it will carry within it the seeds of new kinds of crises. There is an important byproduct of all those liberating advances and it's a completely new thing, a shiny new object. It's called big data. Big data is two things really. It's the sheer volume of data that is produced, collected, and stored. And it's also the ability to parse that mind-boggling volume of data to identify patterns and learn. Not only do we humans learn from the big data, but the machines themselves learn as well. So, stunned by a decade of crisis, public and private institutions are using big data to attempt to prevent or manage real-world systems failures. And finally, maybe our trust in systems will be restored. In the future, big data will stop wars, save the planet, and manage our economies. But along the way, there is emerging a new casualty. And we see evidence of this everywhere today. As these institutions use big data increasingly to avoid the particular crises that matter most to them, 
personal privacy will be increasingly compromised. Knowledge about the liberated masses will be total, and therefore you might ask, will there be liberty at all? And with the total loss of privacy comes a new potential for new kinds of corruption and manipulation. The day will come when some fancy new storytelling model reaches into your private data to create a story that's just a little too personal and a little too close to home, and that will define the next big crisis.